Anthony Agogo, you've just signed pro with Golden Boy. Now more than ever, amateurs have got more incentive to stay in the amateur code. They've got WSB, potentially APB this year. What made you decide to turn over pro? I just, you know, Golden Boy, I had, I had the opportunity to do WSB. I had the opportunity to earn a lot more money from that than I am doing what I'm doing now, you know. But I just want to be, I just want to be the best. I want to further myself. I want to be the best fighter, you know. So I think doing WSB, boxing the same kind of guys over and over again, you're going to get good at boxing those guys, you're not going to like evolve as, as, as a fighter. So I thought, you know, why not join Golden Boy? And I'm looking at the sign now and getting excited about it. I'm there. Uh, why not join Golden Boy and really further myself and have and, uh, and box on massive, massive venues, box on box, box in the O2, box in the AMN Arena, box in Las Vegas and Madison Square Garden. You know, that's an opportunity that, that was just too good to turn down. I've never been to a boxing, uh, to, to a Golden Boy event. I've never had the opportunity to go, couldn't afford going over to America and go to things. So bringing Golden Boy to the UK, you know, that's given all like loads of boxing fans like myself the opportunity to go to like the best show. Like I've never been, but people who have been say it's just out of this world. It's the best boxing show you'll go to. You know, they they don't do small shows. They do big. You know, they do big, good stuff. So I've never been. So if I was just a boxing fan, I'd love for something to turn pro with Golden Boy, come over here and bring Golden Boy to the UK, and I'd be the first person to buy a ticket and go and watch. So. Yeah, I'd like to think I'm a bit of a pioneer for um, for British boxing. I, we've got like some amazing fans, and they deserve to you know see the best kind of boxing, the best boxers in the world. When you were growing up as a young boxer, boxing as a junior, and then as a senior, and internationally as an amateur, did you have boxing idols? And was Oscar De La Hoya the the sort of co-founder of Golden Boy? Was he one of your big idols growing up? Oh, without a doubt, um, my biggest hero was Muhammad Ali. Um, Sugar Ray Leonard would be you know just below him, and alongside him, Oscar De La Hoya. You know, he's in what he's done for the game is just phenomenal. What I like about Oscar, he went to Olympic Games, he won his gold medal. What I like about Oscar the most and what I want to try to kind of do as well is he brought a new kind of people to, to boxing. He had, no, he, the way he fought, people like your, your hardened boxing fans, they loved him because of the way he fought. But he also brought, you know, a whole new genre of people, young kids, old women, young women. And that's what I want to kind of try to do, you know, bring like a new people. I want to kind of be quite entertaining and quite engaging with my, with, with, with my fans and and bring new people to boxing because it's a, it's a great sport and it should be you know appreciated on a what, much wider and a much wider scale than it is you fantastically won a bronze medal in the olympic games in the summer it was a very difficult time for you as you explained at the press conference but outside of that boxing at an international level as an amateur is very different to boxing as a pro you had the style down very well down for amateurs, but how are you going to have to adapt to, to change your style to suit the pro game? Listen to my coach or whoever, I haven't got a coach yet, I think I need to sort that out now. Listen to my coach and um, just do what he says basically, just do exactly what he says. I'm gonna, I want to get the best coach accessible to me, best coach I mean, in, in the world hopefully and, and gel with him and basically just listen listen to him. I, I went to, I joined the GB squad as a good domestic fighter, um, I won the ABAs a couple of times and then they turned me into becoming a good international boxer. It's a completely different sport, completely different kind of... So now I'm becoming a pro boxer, it's just the same, just three years later, you know, I want to... Now I need to learn what I've got to do to become a good pro, but because I've got that ability to adapt and ability to change, you know, it's, it's, it's not an issue. I'm just looking forward to, like, I'm looking forward to, like, you know, the, the wily old pros that like to kind of stick a stinky shot in when you're not expecting. I'm looking forward to that. I want to learn the little way to kind of deal with it and, and defend it and, and count on my own shots. I'm really, I'm really looking forward to it. Is there a style that you think you might try and, and adapt or is there, you know, do, do you see yourself as boxing more or being quite slick or fast-handed? How, how do you see yourself developing? Yeah, I'd like to kind of, I'd love to be able to do the whole thing, you know, everything. I'd like to, I'd like to be a fan's favourite. We talked about Oscar De La Hoya a minute ago. He was, he's been in an exhilarating fight because, you know, he loves a bit of a tear-up, but also a great fighter as well. I love Sugar Ray Leonard, Muhammad Ali, didn't get hit. You know, I love that for the boxing purist kind of thing. Um, if I can kind of embody everything, you know, I like to, I like a little bit of a tear up now and then, but also I like not to get hit because nobody likes getting hit, you know. So I like to kind of just be the best boxer I can be and hopefully in an entertaining way, which I'm always usually in good entertaining fights. Every single tournament I go to, I'm always in at least one barnstormer. So hopefully I can kind of bring that to the pro game and yeah, entertain a lot of, pe a lot of people. It was great to hear a young athlete being so ambitious on the stage today in front of in your first press conference as a pro to, to have that kind of unbridled passion and ambition is quite refreshing. So you've also maybe put the pressure on yourself a little bit by saying those things that you want to achieve. Do you, do you see that as pressure or are you quite happy to, to, to set those standards? That's not pressure. I'm, at the end of the day, you know, I'm a 24-year-old man. You know, I'm, I'm, but deep down, I'm just a small kid from Lower Staff in the east of England, most easterly town in, in the country. Not a lot comes out of there, really. Like, 
I'm not like I'm not far from Silver Spoon. I'm not expected to do much. You know, at the end of the day, I'm a, tr I'm, I'm, I'm a small town kid from a small place. I'm not expected to do much. So for what, what I've done already, you know, is, is big. So what have I got to lose? I don't I don't see what I've got to lose. I'm, I've, I've said what I want to do. I've made a couple of big statements. And if I don't do it, then no, I, I don't do it. But at least I'll try. At least I've had, the, like you said, at least I've had the guts to sit in front of a room full of like, you know, a highly regarded journalists and say this is what I want to do. Let's do it. Best luck.